Though this video is not sponsored by any product whatsoever. So antivirus, it used to be necessary and quite beneficial for individuals to not infect themselves with a virus. Now we have a new dilemma. Seemingly once trustful companies are now using their low level privileged access to track and then sell that user behavior. What a great value proposition. So with the recent $16.5 million fine given to Avast for selling its user data, I thought I would use this news as a segue into what my thoughts are or just antivirus, the state of antivirus in 2024. Is it really necessary? And my controversial or controversial, however you say that, uh, word is no. I, I don't think it's necessary in today's world. Now I'm talking about end user workstations, average individuals like you and I, and not enterprise or business networks as that's on its own playing field. You don't need a third party antivirus program unless maybe you want a second opinion or you're doing some sketchy stuff, uh, especially free antivirus but even paid antivirus products, uh, you really don't need them. For most users, the native Microsoft Windows Defender or Mac OS's X-Protect, as well as their other features, provide a sufficient amount of protection. It's been well known that AV impacts system or computer performance. And well, sketchy practices like these by companies by vast, I mean, are, are kind of inexcusable at this point. I mean, I get it. Having deep-rooted access into hundreds, if not millions of workstations around the world, tracking user behavior seems quite, uh, well, nice because you can monetize that information and make more money. But it's not just a vast that's been known to do this. Uh, McAfee antivirus is basically a virus in and of itself uh, due to how much uh, it impacts system performance. Uh, according to some users, this is anecdotal, but going onto forums, you can see that users continue to get pop-up notifications uh, from the PC saying, hey, install this McAfee antivirus product or creating shortcuts to the McAfee uh, on des PC desktop. And probably the most sketchy practice performed by McAfee, they're changing in or continuously changing back the default search engine from say Google to Yahoo. And I'm sure there is some sort of monetization or payment that Yahoo is giving McAfee. And as recent personal experience, I set up a desktop for my grandparents and the desktop that they ended up buying is from Costco. It came with a one year total protection from McAfee. Well, it was actually a nuisance to act uninstall it since it became pre-installed with the operating system and it kept uh, asking you hey you should upgrade to this or you know doing the constant upsells one of the most comical examples is another antivirus product a well-known one norton antivirus uh, that came out with a feature a couple years ago which allowed you to mine ethereum uh, cryptocurrency on your behalf using their program so that you could be using your cpu cycles to not only compensate uh, Norton, but you could also get a little bit of the fair share. Uh, so Norton would take a half of what you mind and what a great value proposition. Use up your CPU for something you really don't need. Now, this feature has since been discontinued since Ethereum moved from proof of work to proof of stake. But once again, all of these antivirus products, and I'm kind of bundling them up into one here, um, end user workstation antivirus products, I don't know if they're really necessary anymore. So like I said before, built-in native protections, Windows Defender, Mac OS X Protect, as well as their other security features provide a suitable enough protection for everyday browsing activities. And I'm excluding Linux here. I'm just more so talking end user everyday workstations. In combination with the modern internet web browsers, which have built-in protections, and uh, even Google Chrome going as far as detecting compromised passwords in the browser, I don't recommend you do this. They have safe browsing for identifying phishing sites and uh, malicious extensions. There are lots of built-in protections. The gateway to the internet is the browser, and the browser is doing a pretty good job, the modern browser anyway. 
And even speaking of browsers, you have browser extensions that now are security based and they can provide a wide array of protections, um, you know, scan websites, filter content, uh, and even something as simple as uBlock Origin on Mozilla Firefox uh, can really help you with blocking malicious websites, trackers, and best of all, uh, minimizing or deleting advertisements from your internet platform experience. Now, with this being said, it's implied that you're an everyday user. You're browsing Reddit forums, maybe some social media, um, and you're downloading content that perhaps is very popular on basic websites. Now, if you're an individual who's downloading content, maybe seemingly free cracked software, navigating the dark web, downloading cheat codes, sure, uh, download a secondary antivirus product for an opinion on that content. Um, but even then, if I were you, I recommend using a virtual machine or a VPS to compartmentalize your activity. Uh, and you really made up, maybe don't even need an, an, a third party product. I'm not discounting uh, other antivirus products, but I do think that you just have to take a look at your threat model and really identify whether you want to pay for antivirus. So to prove my point here, this is going to be a dumb anecdotal experiment. I am going to go download tons of malware samples on a Windows level virtual machine and see what happens. I decided to look up some common malware variants relevant to today's threat landscape and pulled samples from Malware Bazaar. So I downloaded and executed Async Rat, NanoCore, Formbook, NJ Rat, and Agent Tesla. Malware variants I found on this checkpoint website. Windows Defender was able to identify all of these samples. It wouldn't even let me execute the binaries after I extracted them. And maybe one thought that's coming across your mind is what about uncommon malware variants or zero day attacks? And once again, I'd refer back to your threat model. If you're an everyday user, you probably won't be needing to worry about zero days unless maybe you're a high profile individual. Uh, but overall, Windows Defender does a pretty decent job of the commodity malware variants. So the dilemma is there, the threat model. Do you really need to use antivirus? Most of the times, probably not. If you're just browsing the internet every day, I recommend sticking just with the basic Windows Defender or Mac OS's Xprotect and all their other protections. What are your thoughts on antivirus? Um, let me know in the comments below. I don't have anything necessarily against it. All right, so hopefully you've learned something new or not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know what it is. Until the next time, have a good day.